on the stage. They called Christy first, which I thought was embarrassing, by the way. Why they do that? Who picked the order that they called the candidates? It was like a gladiator, like a Roman arena, calling them out of the back, out of the, out of the bowels of the... Then they forgot Ben Carson. They called him. He didn't come out. And uh, while the camera was filming behind the curtain, the candidates made their way towards the stage. Poor old Dr. Carson did not hear his name being called. So old Doc Carson remained where he was, behind the curtain, standing like a schmendrick back there. All the others are marching up for the diplomas, and this poor kid is sitting there didn't even hear his name being called. I'm sitting there saying, God, Ben, they called your name already. And so he didn't know what to do. Next comes Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz, instead of tapping Dr. Carson on the shoulder and being a decent human being and telling him his name was already called, proceeded to make a smirking, dismissive, whatever type of expression on his face and just left poor old Doc Carson behind. No one told him that he was called. So what happened next? Next comes Donald Trump, who people call mean, right? Just like me. But he's actually the nicest guy on the stage, just as I am. And Trump sees Carson standing like a clueless schmendrick. And instead of stepping over him like a dead body, like Cruz just did, what does Trump do? He stands next to Carson, and he talks to him, cluing him in that his name was called. And Trump waits with Carson. He ushers him to go ahead of him. And then Trump follows suit in the order the names have been called. Did you notice any of this? Did any of you actually notice this behind the stage? All the other candidates stepped over the dead body of Carson, so to speak. Trump stopped there and said, hey, Dr. Carson, or whatever, Ben, you know, your name was called, but, you know, you didn't hear it, so you go ahead of me. Could you believe this? So my listener says this was a behind-the-scenes glimpse into character. One, the Christian Cruz talks very well about his values, but does not seem to literally walk the talk. This instant being further proof. Trump, who speaks caustically at times, turns out as the one with a big heart and a sense of class and decency who does many good things for which no one credits him for. This, to me, summed up the whole debate before it even began. It spoke volumes to me. Christie attacking the kid was good. Rubio is finished with the over, overly sized knot. It looked like he didn't know how to make a tie. It looked like somebody gave him a tie and put it on his neck. It made his head look small. He looked like a kid, the ice cream man. Why do you think I've called Rubio the ice cream man for all these years? Because he looks like an ice cream man that they found in Miami, dingling the bell. And they said to him, hey, kid, you're going to be a senator. He said, what's a senator? Don't worry, you'll find out. You don't have to know. All you got to do is act like you're a senator. Then now, kid, you're going to be president. Most of the commentators' questions were really set up to pit one candidate against another. But to be honest, where there was more factual discussion of topics than in previous debates. If only they would ask Hillary and the, the, the Leninist what they think of this. Bush, forget about it. Carson, the poor guy, what is he doing? Isn't it at this point, I told you what fortunes are made during these, these uh, primaries. You don't understand the finances, do you? There is so much money raised during these primaries for the candidates that they can't even spend it when they drop out. They have to spend it for years. They can't steal it or they go to jail. But they raise so much money that they can then they dispense. It's a money raiser. So uh, someone writes this, Del Shiro, one of my Facebook followers, writes, it's a political zoo out there in Washington with the enemy within practicing trickle-down tyranny in the White House that will eventually lead to a countdown to Mecca in a time for war because of psychological nudity against this government zero that had trickle up poverty simply because liberalism is a mental disorder. <laughs> I guess he's read all of my books. That, kudos to you, Mr. Shiro, for putting it all, all together. Mosquito expert says Washington is downplaying the Zika virus threat to the U.S. Duh. No kidding. Washington is downplaying Zika. You mean we have scientists left at the NIH who like Anthony Fauci? They are politicians. They've been there longer than some diseases. Anthony Fauci has been ensconced in the NIH longer than certain illnesses. And he is a politician put there by Obama right now in order to put out the big lie. That's all. Don't worry. We have in control of it. You'll be fine. Nonsense. I know more about it than you do. And Zika is a real problem. And a mosquito expert has now come out, a real big one, 
dean of the National School of Tropical Medicine at the Baylor College of Medicine, Peter J. Hodes, said, he said, I think Zika will come to America, and actually I think it may be more important than the messaging we're getting out of Washington and the CDC. Good for him. That's as far as he can go, incidentally. I want to get to Bernie Sanders for a minute. He's, he's proving to be a real threat to Hillary for a couple of reasons. She's an out-and-out -out liar. Everything she says is disingenuous. He doesn't lie. He doesn't have to lie because he's a stone-hearted communist from the get-go. That's how he was. That's what he was raised on. He's a red diaper dopa baby. He's the poster boy for my motto, the RDDB, the red diaper dopa baby. He grew up on Seltzer and Karl Marx. He grew up on corned beef and, uh, and Lenin. You may have eaten corned beef and cabbage. He ate corned beef and Lenin uh, every Friday night. And this is who he is. He doesn't lie about it. He wants to take away what's yours and give it to the have-nots. So this is a political Ponzi scheme that we are watching. If you think Bernie Madoff was bad and belongs in prison for life 150 years, you're right. But so does the President of the United States of America because the United States economy is the greatest Ponzi scheme ever invented. How do you think Obama affords to buy off legions of voters, generations of bums who do nothing day and night but sit around and complain about America? How do you think they survive? On what are they living? They're living on a Ponzi scheme. He's giving them a bountiful amount of money every day in one form or another, whether it be in food stamps, welfare. I don't, I don't know how many different federal programs there are feeding these people who are out there complaining about America, but they are the first tier in the Ponzi scheme. And who is sending, uh, funneling the money? Bernie Madoff Obama. Bernie Obama's doing it. Now we got the thing in New Hampshire. Are we supposed to worry about that now? Trump's ahead by like 38%. Carson, they're still going to wheel out up there? I, I, Oh, he doesn't have to do anything now. They just go and vote. Can he stop already, please? It's embarrassing. Rubio was rubbed out. Carson was cursed at the event. Cruz careened forward. He did. Bush is bushed. He's finished. If it wasn't for his mother threatening him, I think he would have dropped out. If Barbara Bush stop, would stop threatening Bush, I think he'd gladly drop out. Kasich, I kind of like him, but you don't know what to do with him. He's like, he's like a guy who has... Kasich always that, has that look like he's about to vomit, like the plane is too turbulent. I don't know what that's called. Travel sickness. And Christie, he looked very good, but he's not going to win. I don't, they don't like him. He lost 200 pounds, but he still looks. I don't think he can win. I'll be right back. It is the Savage Nation. All right, so they're in New Hampshire, and we hear this article now, Heroin Apocalypse Shadows New Hampshire Primary. Who was it in the media who talked about drugs before anyone else was talking about drugs in this election season? Yours truly, Michael Savage. If you recall a month ago, I said, why are we not hearing anything about the drug plague in America? Remember? Then I had Michael Levine on, former DEA uh, agent extraordinaire, do you remember that interview? One of the greatest of my entire career. One of the bravest men I ever met. Why was I talking about drugs? Because nobody was talking about the devastation that drugs have and are wreaking upon our society. So now we read that all of a sudden it's a big story. Now I have a question for my audience, and it's going to take a quick call. We only have a few minutes, five minutes left. Call this number. Why do you think there is such a drug epidemic in New Hampshire, and in all of New England, for that matter. What is explaining this? I mean, we went what, from the pilgrims to the pillheads in one generation? How did this happen? How we go from the pilgrims to pillheads so quickly in New England? Used to be hardworking people. Where'd all of these addicts come from? Where'd all these bums come all of a sudden? Everyone's an addict. Everyone's a victim. I'm sick and tired of hearing that, that addicts are victims. I'm sorry if you have an addict in your family. You know, on a personal level, that's heartbreaking. But it's time already to stop turning every addict into a hero. Every television show, every drug addict, every heroin, every junkie is suddenly a victim. They're not victims. They do it by choice, most of them. Now, some of them, it is true, start out with pain pills for a legitimate injury. And then they get hooked because of the evil pharmaceutical industry producing a drug as strong as OxyContin. I'm aware of that. I get it. 
I understand there's a lot of blame to go around. But the fact is, is that there were pain pills in past generations. There was plenty of medication in past generations as well. And not everybody suddenly became an addict. How did this happen in New England? That's what I want to know. I'm asking that question. Now, why are you calling 855-407-282 on the issue of heroin addiction in New Hampshire and in New England? I want to play one of the craziest sound bites I've ever heard in my entire life. I am positive she is senile. And the only thing that I can figure out is it's a result of too much uh, brisket. Here is Madeline Halfbright talking about women have to vote for Hillary because she's a woman. This you must listen to. Young women have to support Hillary Clinton. The story is not over. They are going to want to push us back. We can tell our story about how we oh climbed the ladder. God. And a lot of you younger women don't think She's you have meds. to. She's on It's been you done. It's not done. She's shot. And you have to help. Hillary Clinton will always be there for you. And just remember, there's a special place in hell for women who don't help each other. Look, she's an old lady. I have more hair on my head than she does. It's sad to watch her. Hillary is so desperate that she would get this old, used woman, who was a monster, by the way, as Secretary of State herself. Madeleine Albright was worse than Hillary Clinton was. And I can give you all the details if you'd like them. She was a horrendous war criminal. In fact, millions of Europeans wanted to try Madeleine Albright for war crimes for what she did to the Serbian people. But putting that aside... The woman is a complete phony. Did you hear what she just said? She said they're going to push us back unless you vote for Hillary. Who's there? The women who pushed that hag back? Are they crazy? Are women this gullible to believe what this idiot just said? No, it tells you how desperate Hillary is. That's what it tells you. But I want to talk about something much more important, which is the heroin uh, epidemic in New Hampshire. I want to know why there is such a heroin epidemic in New Hampshire. That's what I want to know. What is causing the problem? We have one taker, WABC New York. David, what's your opinion as to why there's a heroin epidemic of this proportion in New England? Hi, Dr. Savage. You've mentioned it many times. It's a, it's a combination of heroin coming over the border, obviously, and also the pharmaceutical companies getting kids hooked on oxycodone, uh, blues, all, all those different things. And I think they're, they're both equally to blame for the problem. So look at the answer now. Obama says the answer is treatment. Do you think that's the answer right now? Last week, the Obama administration announced a plan to seek another $1.1 billion to pay for drug treatment. The same refrain over and over again, treatment, treatment, treatment. You know the drug treatment is as big a racket as drug peddling? And I wouldn't be surprised if the boards of directors of drug treatment corporations are not involved in, uh, let's say, nefarious dealings as well on the other side of the ledger. I'm sick of this. Yes, drug treatment is important up to a point. But there's something else that's needed, and that's tougher laws on drug dealing. National Geographic should be given a, a, a oh, oh, man, what I would do with them, man. They've been running a show over and over again glorifying drug dealers around America called Drugs, Inc. And they show drug dealers over and over again like they're heroes, like they're Robin Hoods, when they're poisoning America. No, my friends, treatment is not the only answer to the drug scourge, and we hear no one saying what's necessary. Go to Malaysia and find out why they don't have a drug scourge in Malaysia. See the billboards in Malaysia. You'll understand why these drug dealers who were so brave to practice here don't ply their trade there. Good night. Savage.